I'm proud to tell you that this video is going to be brought to you by G Fuel and, and by using my affiliate link in the pinned comment and in the description box, you'll not only be helping support the channel since it's a affiliate link, I do get a small commission for each sale that's made. So I don't get anything unless you guys purchase it. However, you'll also be able to get some really cool anime themed merchandise as well as energy tubs and different energy formulas. I personally use G Fuel a lot. And when it comes to anime, there's a plethora of different anime to choose from. Drag Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, My Hero Academia, Mobile Suit Gundam, Attack on Titan, and so many other series are available on the website in the form of energy formulas packed with all the vitamins that you need and just enough caffeine to get you going for your day. Right now, G Fuel is running a 25th anniversary campaign for Neopets. Step into the magical world of Neopets and celebrate 25 years of adventure, friendship, and fun with Neopets 25th anniversary G Fuel Golden Berry Energy Tub. You are not going to be disappointed in the flavor with this one absolutely worth every penny for it i mean come on it's called the great golden slushy scoutmaster jigen definitely approves of this one which most importantly this cannot be understated unlike a lot of energy products that are out there there is no crash and there is zero sugar two really huge selling points of why i personally support g fuel in typical anime fashion i am going to need you guys to send me your energy by clicking the affiliate link in the description and in the pinned comment so and when you do so make sure to use my promo code kage to get yourself a discount yo what's going on everybody it's your boy Nora to explain here bring you guys another board to two blue vortex breaking news update and this time we got more bombshells that are coming at us from that joint interview that the naruto series creator masashi kishimoto and boruto illustrator mikio ikimoto did over in france for the last three days the first extensive convention for kishimoto in nine years and ikimoto since 2018 and this time we got more information that's about to send the pairing wars into another stage of eternal debate that's raging on in the phantom so obviously we're gonna troll on this thumbnail because they didn't just pour gasoline on the fire but they made sure to grab a bottle of alcohol and paint thinners to make sure that they didn't just set the phantom ablaze but make it so hot the the fire it becomes unbearable they have dropped major and by major i mean massive breadcrumb for the characters in terms of who they're going to end up with each other at the end of the series with the focus being on who sarda and kawaki specifically are being anchored towards when you get to the end of the series and again it's breadcrumbs they're huge it should change the direction of the conversations we're having about the pairings they didn't specifically come out and say this person's with this person but the breadcrumbs are there when you look at what's being said and you read between the lines now let me get this very upfront and clear because I already know how some of the comments are going to go. I do not personally care about any of these ships. I cover that stuff because on my original channel, what if Naruto married Sakura did over 700,000 views? And over here on Naruto Explain, the remade What If did 1.4 million and the follow ups did. 300,000 combined. A Sasuke marrying Hinata video did 100,000. That's why I'll do stuff like every sign Boruto and Sarda in love and every sign Kawaki and Sarda in love, Kawaki and Class Rapper in love and in a couple months I'll finally drop every sign Boruto and Class Rapper in love where I take neutral stances and I just lay out the signs that people point to that others might have missed and I let you come to your conclusions because again I don't care about the pairings. You let me write Boruto, Boruto ends up dead, Sarda ends up dead, and everybody goes home pissed off. But I am here to serve you guys as my audience before anything else. So what exactly was said? And why exactly is it enough for me to want to troll on this thumbnail? Well, when you look at the comments Ikimoto made, they are pretty right to the point with enough breadcrumbs that they stick out right away the same way that some of Kishimoto's comments about the designs came up and the same way that Kishimoto's comment on the eye of Boruto were shortened to the point but it dropped enough confirmation to make your head spin and it's the same thing here when Ikimoto was breaking down the information about the designs of the characters in Two Blue Vortex he dropped very important information about Sarda and Kawaki that dropped some pretty strong nudges into the direction of each person is going to go when it comes to who they're going to end up with at the end so what we'll do here is 
we're gonna look at what he had to say about the intentional symbolism and how he does his designs. Then we're gonna look at what he said about Sada's design and we're gonna unpack it. And then we're going to do the same thing for Kawaki. We're going to do it in that order because understanding the symbolism and how detailed he is with his designs, it is necessary in order to read between the lines on what it is that he's saying because as naruto's manga tells us repeatedly a ninja they must see through deception and with somebody as detail oriented as ikimoto you have to look at the small things he says quote when conceiving a character their temperament their thinking and their taste should be reflected in their clothes first of all you need to know if the character even cares about clothing or not understanding the level of importance they place on functionality and their appearance even if it's unconscious an outfit is the result of psychological factors at work moreover a fashion exists in every village or region so this right here you have ikimoto coming out and confirming what i said back when Sardis design was first revealed to us last year which is that everything about our design it was an open defiance against Kawaki with him lying to people by using omnipotence so he can pretend to be Naruto's son and lying to people about killing Naruto to make it easier for Konoha to kill Boruto for him as Ikimoto says even if the characters don't do it intentionally when coming up with the design there has to be intentional symbolism and psychology even if it's unconscious on the part of the characters and lo and behold in chapter one of boruto 2 blue vortex we see sarda rebelling against konoha's kill on site order for boruto and we learn she has been trying to prove boruto's innocence for the last three years even at the expense of their hokage dreams that she has this is further elaborated on when you look at what kishimoto said in the same interview according to the translation i got so he says quote Sarda has wore the jacket for two years now. After Boruto left the village, she wore a jacket the same as Boruto had in part one. She also has earrings that have the Uchiha symbol to show her love for Sasuke and Boruto. End quote. Ikimoto then says in another portion of the same interview that, quote, Sarda, on the other hand, in her young woman version, which I'm going to break in here by young woman version, he's referring to young woman version because she's a teenager, so she's 15 here. But getting back to it, because I wanted to kind of clarify that, in her young woman version, she wears a top so large that it reveals her shoulders. That's because it's a men's clothing brand that Borto likes and wears. When Borto leaves the village, Feeling lots of emotions, Sarda buys garments from the shop. As you can see in my case, character design and fashion are inseparable elements, end quote. Her whole design is a memento to Boruto and Sasuke, the two people she loves. As I said, when the design came out, the earrings are meant to, as I've said before, show that she is proudly supporting her father, despite him being viewed as being dishonorable as a traitor for helping the killer of Naruto, apparently, because people think Boruto killed Naruto, the man who freed Sasuke, escaped from the village and evade execution. Anyone can look at her back and they can see the Uchiha crest on her jacket, but people looking at your back are the same people who will whisper about you behind your back and not say it to your face because they know you will slap the taste out their mouth or you will beat them like a Cherokee drum. Those earrings are right in front of your face, the fact that she supports her father. Anything you have to say about her father, you can say it to her face, which is why those Uchiha earrings are on her ears, looking you right in the face. The fact that she also went to the same store that Boruto loves to shop at while in a super emotional state, making an emotional decision after Boruto fled the village to avoid being killed, to buy a jacket with the same color scheme that Boruto wears in the sense that it's black on the outside, but instead of it being pink, her jacket is red and the color red is right next to pink on the color wheel. It is a sign because pink is a shade of red. It is a sign of how strongly her emotions are centered around Boruto, which explains why over in Japan, they just recently released a pair of rings together with Boruto and Sarda. Very similar to how they suspiciously released a set of rings for Naruto and Hinata and Sasuke and Sakura, two married couples. Ikimoto's designs, even as early as the creation of Kawaki, by his own words, 
it was deliberate with his hair color and aspects of his design purposely blending parts of naruto and sasuke together that's a big part of the reason why back in the day people thought kawaki was a clone of naruto and sasuke because of the design elements because ikimoto said even as far back as 2016 in one of his first interviews regarding boruto every detail of his design it has a deeper meaning whenever he makes characters because his influence, they come from people like the guy who draws JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which I'm still currently reading, but I can definitely see the connection. That brings me to Kawaki, which is where things get very, very interesting and even more clear when you look at the story behind his clothes, in particular, who bought his clothes. Ikimoto, when weighing in on Kawaki, drives home what I believe is the biggest sledgehammer to the stake in this debate by shedding light on Kawaki's state of mind and Ada's attempts to work over Kawaki's heart. So here's what he said, which is, quote, it's the opposite for Kawaki. He has no self-esteem. He is indifferent to clothes. When he was with Kara, he wore what Amato prepared for. Him. And today, he dresses without thinking about what Ada buys for him. His sleeve is torn. He leaves it as is, end quote. This is where you go a little bit deeper beneath the surface because they're not going to spoil everything directly. Just like how back in the day, Kishimoto dropped the breadcrumbs at Jump Festa that Obito was Toby because he said that Madara who was Toby at the time, has a deep connection with Kakashi. And all the people who watched either my Kawaki video essay or you watched the two and a half hour Boruto video essay, which specifically in the car part of the video, you know exactly where I'm gonna be going with this next part. Kawaki's low self-esteem, as Ikimoto says, and being someone who isn't truly capable of accepting love, it is a part of his character arc like I laid out in those videos. Clothes were functional things meant to cover the body and keep him warm or keep him cool depending on what season we're in. Love is not something that Kawaki ever truly understood. His father used to beat him daily and make him work to fulfill his cravings as an alcoholic and he didn't hesitate to sell him to Jigen despite Scoutmaster Jigen coming off like a serial child trafficker and predator, which he ended up being both of them. He was someone who would beat Kawaki daily once he got the karma seal after surviving Amado's Ninja Tech alterations to Kawaki's body and beating him so badly that Kawaki would see those goldfish he used to hallucinate about back when his daddy threw him into the broom closet and starved him over after breaking a bottle over his head when he didn't make enough money to buy him some booze. He didn't know what love was and so when Naruto offered it to him, offered him that fatherly love, Kawaki, he didn't know how to handle it. He didn't know how to accept it. He didn't know how to reciprocate it. He became that flower that was so deprived of water for so long that all the love that Naruto showered onto him when he watered him with affection, it spun Kawaki out of control and it shocked his roots if you want to stay with the flower analogy. He didn't understand what Sarada meant when she told him that it wasn't that Kawaki was special. Sure, we as readers know Naruto's projecting his time as a Jinchuriki onto him, but as Sarada was saying, it wasn't so much that Kawaki was special, so much as that was just Naruto being the way he is with everyone in the village. He treats them all like they're his family, and he give anything to protect them. He was a type of warmth that Sarda said she used to be jealous of Boruto for having a father like that, and angry at Boruto for being ungrateful to have a guy that she herself used to daydream about constantly, wondering her words, what her life could have been like if Naruto was her father. It led to Kawaki's obsession taking root because he didn't know how to receive love and that ultimately led to his consequentialism ideology and his behavior that he displayed near the end of part one of the story where he was so dead set and obsessed with taking care of Naruto and keeping him safe that he took away Naruto's free will because his only concern was Naruto's well-being over anything else. I say that to say, a broken person does not know how to receive or properly reciprocate love. I can tell you from experience, both as a broken person as well as someone who has dated broken people, those are the type of people you have to be patient with them when you're in a relationship with them or you're attempting to form a relationship with them doesn't have to be romantic it can just be a friendship because those are people they are learning as they go and they'll be hot and cold as a response 
because that's their defense mechanism. Ada has been written as someone who is in love with Kawaki to a point she even admits when Miski says in the proper translation of the manga, which again, the official screwed this section up, at least the English version screwed it up, when Miski says she doesn't know why she loves Kawaki, she being Ada, Ada replies, that's what love is. It is illogical. Your chest gets tight at the thought of the person and it doesn't matter the why behind it because the heart, it wants what it wants even when what it wants makes no sense. Ada buys clothes for Kawaki, and that is a sign that she cares for him. She is invested in him, and it goes back to what part one of Boruto laid out for. Her love language, it is given. It's not told to you specifically. Hey, this is Ada's love language. You gotta pay attention for a little bit more than two seconds and read between the lines. Boruto uses a lot of subtle writing. It's not literally her giving gifts. It's being willing to gift yourself and your time to someone to be of service to them, to help them in whatever way possible. Like we see in part one, where again, reading between the lines, she uses omnipotence because it was both Kawaki's desire as well as her own desire to wanna to be a use and help Kawaki. She gifted him her power and she changed reality as a result. She is now physically gifting him with clothes taking time to pick out clothes that he would look good in and clothes that aesthetically highlight his best features, which again, that is Ikimoto being deliberate with his character designs. And he is someone who has a deep understanding of both fashion as well as color relationship. And he is someone very particular when it comes to symbolism. It's a tangible expression that she is thinking about him and trying to show him a sense of worth of what she feels for him and the work that she believes that he has. But as Ikimoto said, Kawaki has low self-esteem. He views himself as having no worth, just as he viewed himself as being unworthy of the fatherly love and attention that Naruto gave him. It's one of his character flaws. It's one of his tragic character flaws. It would not shock me if we learn that the food that they were eating in chapter six, it was prepared by Ada because it would fit her character, love language being gifts, food for her brother, someone she loves, can't stand, but someone she loves, and food for Kawaki, the eye of her affection, the person she is in love with. It's interesting that Ada and Sarda, two people who are written as being opposite spectrums of each other, yet very slowly there are seeds being planted that they'll be friends in the long run based on Sarda's original offer for friendship after she was told they needed to be ready to fight against Ada, someone who wants a genuine connection away from the people that she can control. It's interesting that their decisions made with clothing are directly linked to people that they care for. Sarda by buying clothes, bore to loves from the shop that he loves to go to, also she can feel closer to him during a moment where she was emotionally spinning out of control and Ada buying nice things for Kawaki to show him how much she values his worth, even when he himself does not see value in himself. Again, I do not personally care for shipping. Again, I am going to troll on this thumbnail to see exactly who gets pissed off on the thumbnail and not the substance of the video. Because if you get pissed off over the thumbnail and not what I'm saying in the video, I don't want you in our community. Off is the direction you can fuck as far as I'm concerned. I thought this was a pretty interesting set of information when you read between the lines right here, given how intentional Ikimoto is, especially with him saying that the Matrix inspired some of his changes that he suggests for Boruto's story when he makes tweaks to the script that Kishimoto gave at the beginning and Kishimoto goes over them for approval before the story goes into the inking phase. I'm not going to spoil the Matrix even though you should probably have already seen it given how old it is but it lines up with Sarda being with Boruto and Kawaki being with Ada when you really think about it if you understand the Matrix which over here on the left we have every sign Boruto and Sarda are in love which again is a neutral video. I don't take a stance in that one. And we also have my new Jujutsu Kaisen chapter review on the left. And over here on the right, we have the Boruto chapter review for those of you guys who've not seen that just yet.